Well, hello everyone. How are you all doing today? Um, before I get into my readings, I figured I'd update you all on stuff a little bit. Um, I took a fall the other night. Well, actually, I'd fallen asleep in this chair here, this office chair. And I guess I must have shifted my balance in my sleep. Because the next thing you know, I was falling. And I ended up pinned between this desk cabinet I have over here and the chair. The chair is stuck behind me. It flipped over too. And that scared me into having a seizure. And this was like 3.30 in the morning. 2.30, 3.30, something like that. Oh, boy. And I had to crawl over to get to the coffee table to get up. And it was just uh, a, a terrible day. It was a terrible day, period. That was just the start of it. But uh, anyway, I'm doing fine now. It was sore for a few days there. And I'm doing much better now. Still a little sore, but much, much better than what I was. And, uh, let's see, uh, a few of you I noticed mentioned how much you like our road trips, and we are planning more, just to, uh, fill you in, um, we've got some more places picked out, and if some work out, it'll be quite, quite a video, let me put it that way, it'll be quite a video, one that Probably hasn't been done before, at least around here. Anyway, that's something to uh, look forward to in the coming months or so. We have to try to pick days when it's cooler weather to, to do stuff. But, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have some cool days over the next uh, month or so. Or more. But, uh... All right, now, uh, let's get to uh, the drawing. Now, uh, there was three of you on the list of, that wanted readings that uh, I'd already drawn, put in the drawing, and pulled your name before this year, so far this year. And so there's only four people from the list then that haven't um, been picked yet for the free drawing so i put those four names up and got my camera here since i can't do, figure out how to do split screen i'll uh i'll photograph it for you all and uh you'll be able to watch with me as we find out who the winner is okay here we go Okay, let me turn on the camera. Okay, camera's on. Now you can see on the list here, it's Sherry Kim, Texas, an African son. Excuse me if, uh, if I mistakenly didn't put your name up here or something. But anyway, um, here's the four names. Please let me know if I did or didn't. Um, but here's the names, and I'm going to hit uh, the button, and let's see who gets drawn. And it's Texas. There you go. Congratulations, Texas. You finally won. You've been here with us for a while. It's, it's about time you won. So now, let's get on to those readings. Now, I started setting up already, so it wouldn't take me so long. But I felt like uh, maybe I should just talk while I do it. Unfortunately, though, I just uh, pretty much gave you all my news. Um, I will tell you that... Uh, clue you in maybe if they let me film in there there is a local 
museum that houses something very unique very unique and uh those of you into the paranormal i really like this it's something very different you don't have to be into the paranormal to like this um something very different but if that falls through then i'll tell you what what the plan was i just gotta make some phone calls anyway i spilt my thing of incense that i had before which is okay it was old anyway and i've added some new um there's frankincense myrrh white kupal dragon's blood uh and that's it there's a little palo santo in there too to help it burn so i'm gonna get this all lit up if i can sometimes these are stubborn and don't want to light i about have to get a torch going here to a bonfire going i should say to to keep it going But shortly here, it'll be smelling really good here. Let's see. Runes. Um, Susan wants the runes. So I'll give Texas the runes too while I'm at it. Good. And let's see what we get, Susan. Nothing. No, nothing. No, that's got some. And that's got some bush to it, too. Okay. Just trying to find the ones with the push to them. Now, um, it's a good time for a partnership with somebody. It could be a romantic partnership. It could be a, a partnership with a friend, a family member, just a relationship between two people, okay, of some sort. Um, good time for business dealings with people and stuff like that. Um, it's fortunate time for you um a possibly possible time to uh receive gifts too um not positive but it's always there um wisdom you're going to need to uh have wisdom or possibly get wisdom off of someone else um you might be tested and not uh on a textbook level test but uh kind of uh physically emotionally in some other way tested your patience might be tested something along those lines and um you might be inspired by something 
or give advice or ask for advice for someone from someone excuse me this next one there's something being hidden here something that the runes won't say don't want to say i'm not sure so they're not uh, giving this up but uh it's part of your destiny And there are certain things the runes either they don't know or they can't tell or whatever. They don't give. So there's a big mystery around here going on. Uh, could be secrets. Um, something along those lines being kept from you or you're keeping yourself perhaps. Next over, you're abundant in, it looks like, family members and, and friends and family members and um, a rich heritage. Um, you have a good house, good place to live, I should say, um, but there's still, there's still mountains to climb. You're not living in a lap of luxury you still got hills to climb stuff to overcome and finally we get over to feo now here you're in for some disappointments um, maybe some sort of loss possible money problems possible arguments with somebody i'm not sure it could be any of those um, and it really hasn't, sometimes it gives clues as to what this mystery might be, and there's just so much different going on here, I'm not really sure exactly where to pinpoint it, um, maybe you might understand and be able to, uh, figure that, that one out yourself, Susan, I'm not sure. But I hope that made some sense for you. All right. I started setting up already, so it wouldn't take me so long. But I felt like uh, maybe I should just talk while I do it. Unfortunately, though, I just uh, pretty much gave you all my news. Um... I will tell you that, uh, clue you in maybe, if they let me film in there, there is a local museum that houses something very unique, very unique, and, uh, those of you into the paranormal, I really like this. It's something very different. You don't have to be into the paranormal to like this. Um, something very different. But if that falls through, then I'll tell you what, what the plan was. I just got to make some phone calls. Anyway, I spilt my thing of incense that I had before, which is okay. It was old anyway. And I've added some new... Um, there's frankincense, myrrh, white kupal, dragon's blood, uh, and that's it. There's a little palo santo in there, too, to help it burn. So, I'm going to get this all lit up, if I can. Sometimes these are stubborn and don't want to light. I about have to get a torch going here to... A bonfire going, I should say, to to keep it going. But shortly here, it ought to be smelling really good here. Now, Texas is next Oops. 
Oh, no, hold on. I can't do this. I left two out of the bag. Sorry, Texas. Let me do this again. I want to make sure you have a chance to get them all. Oh, this one jumped out while I was shaking the bag up. So we're going to use that one. That's Seagull. Oh, and none of them comes up now. Okay. We're going to have to find which ones are meant to be. Nothing on that. Okay, that one's got bush. I think that one's got some bush. Wow. Yeah, those are all weak, but these are strong, or stronger. Not real strong. I've seen much stronger, so whatever happens in here, it won't be as extreme as it might sound, Texas. Okay, you got a very positive rune here on this one. It means uh, victory. Uh, you'll have clear vision. Um, achievement, um, also a good time for rest, if you want to just rest up and, uh, kick back for a while. This one warns against being selfish, uninvolved, um, watch your, your, keep your ego in check, um, because uh, it kind of worries, uh, kind of warns that uh, you could be a victim or end up alone or something, you know, if, if you don't uh, look out for that. Okay, this is a good time for you uh, with a partner, with a business associate, with a friend. Some sort of relationship you have with somebody is going to go very smoothly, very well. Um, next, we have Yara. Okay, it says, uh, basically that, uh, don't rush things. In order for things to really work out the way they're supposed to, you can't rush them. You know, they've got to happen on their own good time. And the last one is um, I see a change in attitude. Some sort of radical change that's going to be going on here. Maybe it's already started. Maybe it's coming in the future. But there's going to be some sort of a major change coming in your life. Might be your attitude your outlook on things, your attitude might change to toward something or about something. There's going to be some sort of change. It might not be about attitude, but there will be some sort of change. All right, Texas, hope that made sense. Okay, and that was all for the runes. Um, let me see. We have a couple for the oracle cards. 
three of them, in fact. And let me put that away. All right, folks, I'm back. Sorry about that. It's now uh, well, 5.10 in the morning, so bear with me. I'm a little sleepy, but uh, I just woke up, and I, I just was in the mood to do these. So, here we go. All right, I'm starting out with past life, and I believe that was requested by, let me go back and look, just to be sure, it was requested by African Sun. And, oh, shoot, my incense just went out again. It was going real good there. Come on now, what's the matter with you? Oh, come on, don't want no wimpy little puffs. What a nice flame going there. I'll see how that goes. If it doesn't go out, then I'll have to, to huff and puff and blow it out. I wish you all could smell this, though. It smells so good. It kind of has a musky smell to it. Okay, you've got medicine man or woman. That over here. Next, you have unrequited love. I had to blow that out. That was, I could feel that on my arm. And the last one is, you can see through the smoke, it's transportation. And let me give you the, the meanings of those. This card reveals your past lifetime as a healer. You bought you brought this knowledge forward and it is now embedded within your unconscious. This is why you have an instinctive knowledge of healing, as well as natural healing gift. You drew this card to help you gain con confidence as a healer. Perhaps you're considering taking classes or entering a healing profession. This card indicates that you have a soul connection to this topic. While there's never a guarantee of absolute success, you have a passion and calling for healing that could form the basis of a successful practice. So that means uh, basically you'd make a really good healer if you know it or not. You have that ability. And next, we have Unrequited Love. This card indicates that you've had a painful experience with unrequited love in a prior lifetime. The person you love deeply didn't share your feelings, or you may have been betrayed or abandoned. This individual may be in your present life. These experiences of unrequited love may now be negatively affecting you now. For example, 
you might distrust your lover's intentions or his or her ability to make a monogamous com commitment. Sometimes those doubts have a basis in current reality. However, romantic insecurities can also be products of prior lifetimes. When that occurs, the unconscious insecurities are difficult to pinpoint or heal unless they're consciously realized. This is why irrational jealousy and neediness may actually ruin an otherwise good relationship. relationship. Sometimes the best cure for past life regression for couples so that you can both remember the situation that caused you pain in other lives. And the last one is transportation. This card signifies that you had intense experiences involving transportation in prior lifetimes. This is especially true if you presently have phobias related to airplanes, cars, and so on. These fears don't dissipate as a result of getting traditional counseling or hypnotherapy. In these cases, you have suffered a traumatic past life event in some type of vehicle, which has caused you to lose trust in it. You may have been involved in the invention of a form of transportation or related technology, and that knowledge wants to serve you in this lifetime. This includes those who lived during the time of Atlantis, when transportation was fueled by solar and crystal power. Your, night, your life purpose may involve reawakening the knowledge of alternative modes of transportation, which could be environmentally friendly to our world at this time. All right there, African son. I hope that made some sense to you. Three very uh, deep, interesting cards. I hope that applies. Or else it's just telling me don't wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and try to read cards. <laughs> I feel like I'm up to it. And I guess that's all that counts. All right, next one is for, let's see, uh, who wanted Whispers of Love? Uh, that was Nat. Next one's up for Nat. And rain you'll be after net. Uh oh, a couple got flipped on me here. Actually, three of them did. Oops. These cards are a little bit slippery. Let's do it that way now. Oops, sorry for hitting the mic. All right. Um, oops. First one you have is be authentic. Be real and true to who you are and how you feel. 
There's a lot of symbolism in this. So I'll show you the card. Hopefully you can uh, see the detail in it. If I get it right. Hold it closer. Okay. There's a woman with a swan in her hair. A lizard and a cheetah, it looks like, in a tree with a woman underneath. And it looks like a little boy doing something down there with a butterfly and flowers and there's a sunset. Oh, that's the woman over here that has a swan on her head. Don't know what she's doing with a swan on her head. Maybe it was the fashion of the day. <laughs> okay, the next one is turn on your heart light. Reflect on a time when you experienced love. Okay. And she has a woman with feathers in her hair. And it looks like smoke's rising from her head. And there's a, an eagle up in the back. Okay. Let me see. Up over here is the eagle. If you can see it. And there's like smoke coming out her head. I don't understand that. She's burning up, Captain. She's burning up. And the last one. Is act as if you... Um, act as if your partner is here. Whether you love someone in real life or not, act as if they are with you so you will always consider them. Okay. And it shows uh, two people with like butterfly wings and antenna. They seem to be dancing. So that must be the, the partner card, the relationship card. Okay, can you see it? I hope so. All right. Now, let me read you the meaning of those. Okay, the police car just pulled up out front. Don't know why. <laughs> Nothing I've done. I'm going to jail, Ma. <laughs> Send cookies. Anyway, uh, be authentic. Be real and true to who you are and how you feel. Authenticity is sometimes is authenticity is important in all relationships. Sometimes it might seem easier to stifle your feelings and do something you normally wouldn't do. Be candid and be who you truly are. Accept others for who they are. And don't feel the need to change yourself or anyone else. Your confidence may not be where it needs to be. Or you may have lost the ability to connect with yourself. You have adapted yourself to fit into someone else's ideas. Or given up your choices to make another happy. Stop hiding and allow your true self to be seen. Recognize your needs, your emotions, and your joys. Take care of yourself so you can present the real you in mind 
body, and spirit. This includes taking care of your health. Get plenty of sleep, rest, manage your stress, and make sure you are eating well. A woman wearing a white swan as her hat. I, I thought that's what that was. <laughs> um, wearing a white swan as her hat is before you. A swan is a signal of as uh, a sign of optimism and assurance. This is allowing you a fresh start where you can be seen for who you really are. The lizards in the tree are reminding you to ground yourself. This suggests sensing increased sensitivity and self-awareness. Be in harmony with your thoughts and feelings and mindful of your actions. All right. Next one is turn on your heart light. That's an old song. Turn on your heart light. I'm not going to sing it. But I forget who, who does it. Um, geez, that's it's been so long. Now I have to look that up. Reflect on a time when you experienced love. Thinking of loving moments will enable you to open your heart. Drawing on a memory of love reopens and heals your heart to receiving love. It is important to keep your heart light and broadcast your love out of the world. Discover your way, ways to convey extra love to each person in your life. The world is always reflecting your thoughts about yourself and those around you. If you think the world is a positive and loving place, that will be what you experience most of the time. Getting back to a place where you believed in love will bring even more love back to you. A, picture, a picturesque woman faces the future with a hand placed over her heart as she recalls a tender memory. The feathers adorn her hair are sometimes a message of love. It may be that someone or something is trying to reach out to you. Feathers may prompt you to understand that infinite people cherish you. Breathe into your heart and imagine it light as a beacon that calls to those you love. And the last one. Act as if your partner is here. Whether you have someone in your life or not, act as if they always are with you so you will always consider them. If your actions and thoughts take someone else's feelings into account, you will be more aligned with a true relationship. If your partner is not with you yet, generate the feeling that you are already sharing your life with your special someone. This will change the way you feel and can alter your attitude and your potential to attract them. into your life. Revel in the thought that you are in a faithful relationship when you create a vacuum by affirming your desire as if you have it, the universe will bring it to you more quickly. You draw into your life the things that are more in harmony with your beliefs. Believe and trust that love is coming your way. See your energy as a love attracting magnet. Live as if you are in your desired relationship and appreciate the phase prior to the arrival of love. A fairy couple effortlessly dances across the midnight sky. A large moth is beneath them. The moth uses its scent to pull in a mate. There is no concern, worry, or doubt concerning her ability to attract love. Use the energy of the moth to relax into a state of trust. Love is not far away, and you are in the process of bringing it to you. So, uh, that if you have somebody, you'll be more aligned with a true relationship right now. If you don't have anybody, uh, 
go back and listen to what I just read. <laughs> because that said a lot. Basically, act like you're with someone. And I find love happens when you're not looking. When you look, it never turns out. Or you jump into something you really didn't want into in the first place. But that's just my personal experience. Although uh, someone else told me that too. I've had a few people actually agree with that. So, yes. Um, don't look for love. No, you just have to wait. Because love don't come easy. It's a game of give and take. <laughs> you can't hurry love. No, you just have to wait. Sorry. Um, bad singing. And the last one is uh, Rain. Here we go, Rain. And she wants six, the soul's journey. And you have a good day too, Rain. And take care and you take safe too. Or be safe too. Soul's Journey. Oh, my cards are out of whack here, too. Let me see what's going on. No? Okay. The design on the back. Oh, let me go back. Here we go. The design on the back. Okay, just uh, on quick glance, remind me of this card. And I was holding it from the bottom, so I didn't see the wording or anything. And I thought the card had flipped over. I'm just the one that flipped. <laughs> now, my excuse that it's early in the morning. That's... That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. I'm shuffling your cards here while I ramble. All right. There are not many in that pile. I'm just not feeling that pile there. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, we have Perseverance. And it says, I know that I can do whatever I set my mind to. Next. Friendship. And it says, I understand that a friend is in my life for a reason. Yes, we are all in each other's lives for a reason. I believe that. And the last one is abundance. And that one says, I am a limitless being, and I can manifest whatever I desire in this physical reality. Okay, so, as a soul, you are on a mission in this physical dimension. You are the only one who knows the correct path to take. Your intuition, your connection to spirit, is your compass. 
You have a strong, you have a, you have the power to stay the course and you are stronger and more determined than you might think. In order to experience many successes in life, you must mature and realize the strength within yourself and the quanti quality of inner courage. Life just doesn't happen. We must make it happen. It is natural for us to believe in this human school to shy away from what we believe to be difficult because we concern ourselves with how others will perceive us. We are afraid of failure, ridicule, or coming up short. Now is the time to make the proper changes and take risks to do things you never thought you could do before. Your soul must learn to become aware of its inner strength. Live the joyfulness your soul yearns for, okay? and engage in, in activities that you always wanted to try but were afraid you'd fail at. Your soul would not yearn for something that you couldn't accomplish. You have, to, you have the strength and fortitude to be cap capable of greatness. Okay, next up we have friendship. All humans are created from the same source, but there is some cells that share a unique kinship. Friendship can be the same. Friendship can be the most exciting and beautiful experience on earth, but it can also be frustrating and heartbreaking. Understand that everyone in your path is here to teach you something. It may be for a year or a lifetime. Together you will teach each other various les lessons of the heart, such, such as trust, love, loyalty, and admiration. The bonds of friendship are often stronger than those of family. You have formed a bridge of understanding between the two of you that have stood the test of time and lifetimes. A true friend will illuminate your path instead of dim it. He or she will always give advice with the best with your best interest at heart. Be able to communicate as a soul level at a soul level with another human being is the biggest treasure of the physical dimension. I think that's true. And then the final one is abundance. And here we go. I'll try not to screw this one up. I am a limitless being and I can manifest whatever I desire on, on this physical reality. Always remember that you are God and God is in all creation. God says yes. The ego says no. In order to have abundance in all areas of your life, you must create the space of receiving and knowing that you are deserving of anything your heart desires. The more you can realize, release limit, the more you can release limited thinking and worry, the more open you are to receiving the infinite flow of the universe. Allow yourself to have fun when manifesting what you want in life and enjoy the process. By embracing a positive mindset, you are opening the door to unexpected abundance. It's natural to have abundance in your life, and you must realize that any thoughts of limitless limitedness may have come from either a past life or a life condition you have chosen to overcome. They could also originate from programming that you received from the environment that you grew up in and the flow and the value system you were taught when you were young. Now is the time to begin to live with the realization that you are worthy 
of having abundance in every aspect of your life. When you are in the vibration of receiving, you can manifest whatever you desire in this physical reality. All right, Rain. So there you have it. I hope that made some sense. And then when it says you are God, I think we're all a part of God. Just little pieces of him as a whole. That's my personal belief. Because when he created us, he put something into us. And that was a little piece of himself. If not uh, mentally or emotionally, you know, it's... He put thought into it. Okay, let me see. For um, Texas, let me uh, do... Um, I don't know. I may be way off with this, Texas. But I'm feeling the Native American Oracle for you today for some reason. And I'm sorry I keep hitting that mic. I'm on a limited area here. Wish I had one of those nice mics that hung up right in front of my face so I could, could just talk to it. But no. I got to have a cheap one. <laughs> anyway, it does the trick. Not as nice as I'd like, but it works. So, hey. All right. Texas gets the Native American Oracle. Let's put these up. Okay. Okay. Texas. Now these cards are just numbered. They don't have any saying on them. But uh, if you ask me, that looks an awful lot in a way like a yin-yang. It reminds me of a yin-yang. And I think what it represents is... Uh, what I think it represents, I'm not sure. I'll have to look at the reading. But uh, ancient beliefs were like, a lot of them were that the sun, you know, rises and goes across the sky. And it's like an endless cycle because after that, he goes down into the underground, which is where the moon has been overnight on the other side. So then the moon comes up on our side and the sun goes down and he makes his way through the underground. That's how they believe. And I forget the story behind them. They were all different, but uh, okay. The next one is an Indian riding a horse, a Native American Indian, I should say. Sometimes it's just so hard. Too many syllables. And there's a TP.
The first one is the heavens. Destiny. The heavens unfold across the sky like a sacred book, revealing universal truths and specific destinies. In the book of the heavens, we find access to the mind, the wisdom, and the laws of the Creator. From this influence throne, infinite throne, the earth is nourished with rain and transgressors may be struck by lightning. The stars spell out stories and guide precise rituals. The moon measures time and infiltrates the journey of life from birth to death and all the changes in between. The sun illuminates the world, rendering, rendering the detail of the heavens invisible, but helping us to see the earth and all around us, which is also a sacred book. And the message is, step back, look at the big picture, and let time unfold without meddling. The key word, certainty, truth, changes, harmony, hope, creativity, beauty, rebirth, renewal, destiny. And your time is dusk or dawn, a day, a month, or a year. I don't get that. But anyway, next one is... Tirawa and the Cosmic Buffalo. Fulfillment. Tirawa, Tirawa is the God of the heavens, the creator of the world, and the guardian of the Cosmic Buffalo. Each of the buffalo's hooves is part of the cadence of the four eras, moving it until it is completely consumed. When the last hoof is consumed, the world will enter a phase of destruction from which it will rise again only with buffalo, uh, buffalo's rebirth. Well, this is a life cycle and a reminder that there is a proper time for everything. Periods of lack are followed by times of abundance. Message, if things are not how you'd like, remember that everything natural cycles of life will bring about change. Everything is born, grows, and dies, thus attaining fulfillment. The key words, fulfillment, completion, cycles, rebirth, the power of life, endings, and beginnings. The endings or conclusions of a situation or say, say season. That's your time. At the end of the season or at the end of a, a successful conclusion to a situation. Okay, and the last one is the teepee. It means protection. Teepees are dwelling places that provide warmth in winter, coolness in summer, and protection from rain. In addition, they can also be disassembled and moved when needed. As a symbol, it speaks to perhaps the to it speaks of protection and the presence of this heavens that watch over the earth. Teepees are often considered with a ritual and so become sacred space within a driving manifestation of popular wood, medicines, and the inner centering and connection with the divine spirit that is achieved in the participating in rituals. When faced with adversity or a strange, massively unsolved issue, retreat to a safe space. Message, if things are not how you'd like, remember that the natural cycles of life 
will bring about change. Everything is is born, grows, and dies. Then attain fulfillment. Keywords fulfillment, completion, cycles, the birth, the process of time, the power of time, and endings and beginnings. Okay, I'm done these. Okay, let me see what comes next. The dice. There they are. I'll give you the I Ching, I Ching. This is for Texas. I'm getting stuff ready. And let me see. You'll get a tarot. But Texas, I have a special surprise for you when we get to the tarot. All right. And I'm back. Uh, you all may notice some difference in the lighting and stuff along the way. And that's because I take breaks in between and stuff. And this kind of wears you down after a while. It's like it's emotionally draining or something. I don't know. But these next readings are for Texas. Let's get started here. All right. Well. Okay, that's a nine. It's a nine. So greater earth over water is what I need to read for you. And here we go. The reservoir. A fortunate supply of help, nourishing roots, a friend who aids growth. Picture it. Healthy soil over rock with channels of water rising through it to nourish the plants at the surface. When greater earth provides a solid field of rock and fertile soil over the water beneath, the water becomes a hugely positive influence, feeding and healing the life on the surface. When your mundane concerns are currently slow and stable, then reaching down to explore fresh, refreshing waters can be very enriching. There's a lot about this reading that points to enrichment. In fact, all the greater earth results can be seen as the subject of the situation, moving into being made more physical, linked to work or the home in a very real way. From air, ideals become reality. From water, it is feelings and emotions, friendship and healing that becomes embodied in the physical world when it had previously only been in your heart. If this is about the workplace and earning money, then it comes from a project that you care about personally. If the situation is in relationships, or the home, then again it moves from a base of good feelings into a more reliable and physical manifestation. The only danger here comes from Earth's heaviness. It can be boring, predictable, and reliable. This is all brilliant most of the time, but if you were hoping for more water or the frantic speed of fire, it could be slower than you wished. If the greater earth goes to extremes, then it could prevent the water from rising up to aid the green plants on the surface. This could lead to the crushing dreams beneath the unyielding rock and practical concerns denying the needs of the heart. Do not become so solely focused 
on efficiency or safety in work or home life. Instead, allow the opportunity of safe, nurturing emotions to come gently to the surface against a solid and reliable background. The earth reassures us that our plans have good foundations and let the sometimes unpredictable or messy water can be contained and drawn up for its positive aspects. The water truly is a reservoir to be called on, but all around is de dependently safe ground, capable of fertile growth and sh sheltering support. Look for opportunities to turn the things that you care about into something capable of supporting you. Look at the people around you who, who you could make a more solid part of your life, but hold on to the emotional connection as well. Okay. Next up, I have the I Ching. And you can call it the I Ching, the I Ching, whichever one. I think the correct pronunciation is I Ching. But uh, it looks like I Ching, so it can be either way. Tomato, tomato. All right, here's the I Ching for Texas. Let's put that back on top. There we go. Okay. Number five. That's the first one you got. I love these old drawings that they have, like they're taken from a a tapestry or something. Here's number 27. Very pretty cards. And last one is number 13. Okay. Number five is waiting. Water rises to heaven, waiting for rain. When water moves into the sky to create clouds, nothing can be done but to wait for the rain to fall in its own time. Thus it behooves one to be cheerful and accept the time of waiting. Worrying will not change the circumstances any more than it will change the clouds and rain. Bide your time and properly prepare for the future. Now, 27 is providing nourishment. Thunder under the mountain, attend to the people's needs. Thunder arouses the populace from complacency and shows them what is more urgently needed. It is, an, it is important to nourish people with the food they require, taking care to address their concerns. A wise, wise leader will not impose his or her preferences on the people, but rather will listen to their will and endeavor to provide nourishment of both body and spirit. And the last one, 13. And it says, it's fellowship. Fire under heaven, unity within diversity. A signal fire burn, burning under an open sky can be seen for miles if conditions are right. Such a fire will draw allies and kindred spirits 
congenial fellowships in public will attract more people to your cause. A diverse alliance that shares common goals can accomplish even the most difficult tasks. All right. And there you have that, Texas. That was my fault. I bumped it. Put away my cards. Sometimes it goes off on its own, but that time I was responsible. All right. So let's see who we have next. Who's our next victim? <laughs> tarot, tarot. Okay, we have... Uh, Three tarots, four with Texas. Well, uh, that's including Texas. Three tarot. Okay. Now, Texas, I'm going to do something special with you for your tarot reading. Because I saw this and I was like, I had to... Uh, I had to do this with you. I know what your questions are normally about. So, I got this new set of uh, tarot cards. It's called the Ghost Tarot, which sounds a little spooky, but uh, it has. Uh, readings for um, you can read for different things like uh, for love and romance uh, for financial situations which is what I'm going to give you and uh, what else um, I forget the other one for career maybe or something like that or you can just give a regular reading. But uh, I'm going to try this out with you. Now, I'm not going to give as many cards with this because the readings will be a little bit longer. And because I have to uh, look up the meaning of each one. Oh, please. Are shuffled good? Okay. The first one you got. Oh, Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles. Next one is Six of Cups. But it's turned upside down. Next one is Ten of Cups. And it too is turned upside down. And the final one, Seven of Pentacles. And like the last three, it's turned upside down. Okay, yes. I have the, the love meaning, the career meaning, and the finance meanings. But for, and I'll give you one of the options, or a regular reading of rooms, folks, who's listening. But Texas, I know what your question normally is, so I'm going to... Follow along with that and give you a financial meaning. Okay, it says 
A sudden windfall may be coming your way with the Ten of Pentacles. Since this card is related to family, it can likely come from a relative. The card can also mean that you are setting up your financial future. You may be putting together your retirement plans, building your savings, or even creating a will. In a general sense, this card signifies wealth and money that comes from family. Six of Cups. The goodwill of the Six of Cups can relate to your finances in a number of ways. At times, this card can signify a gift or donation or simply a sharing of resources. This card is also related to childhood and home, signifying that this sharing may come from family members. Wow. Your family members are going to be nice to you, Texas, or this is kind of in the past, so they have been. Um, you may be returning to your parental home, giving you the ability to save your own funds more while being amongst the comfort of those that you love. Alternately, you may be on the other side of this and welcoming family back into your home with sharing resources. Number 10 of Cups. Okay, this one says, When it comes to your finances, the reverse Ten of Cups can signify domestic disharmony regarding issues of money. You may be faced with disputes at home about how much you should be spending or how much of what you have is yours versus someone else's. There can be a basic feeling of financial instability at home that can be add to this nervous atmosphere. Your finances and your emotions are likely to be deeply connected right now, and resolving issues in one or more, one or the other may be helpful in cleaning out the whole mess. And the final one is the Seven of Pentacles. Okay, coming up here in the future, Texas. In finances, the Seven of Pentacles in reverse can symbolize investments of time, energy, and resources that are not paying off. You may even suffer losses. Even when you are working hard on your dreams, you may not get rewarded. Negotiate for what you're worth. So there you go, Texas. I don't know what you think of that reading. Now I need to go over to the table to do the final two. All right. Next we have Sherry, who wants a tarot card. So let me shuffle these up.
Alright, we have the Queen of Swords. Um, this is a person that's kind of influencing you, uh, advising you, helping you along. Um, could be a woman. Uh, someone with a lot of clear insight. Um, she's like a warrior. You know, and she's there to fight for you and to help you out in matters of that. Because right now I see also there's some squabbling and bickering going on between you and somebody else. It's not major, major outright fight. It's just a minor thing. Something that hasn't turned into anything major yet. Just minor bickering and squabbling. and Just like brother and sisters do, you know, that type of thing. Okay, in the past, uh, boy, there's been some, like, clairvoyancy, clear vision, um, someone's been advising you, I see a lot of advice from these people, possibly a woman, um, not positive on that, but it could be a woman. Um, and this clear, clear vision, her good insight into things has probably helped you out before in the past. Well, there's a, a situation now that's uh, coming up where uh, things are kind of in the balance and need, you need, or you needed that again. It happened again, or else it's still part of the same thing, I'm not sure. But this has been in the past here. Now we're getting closer to the present. Um, I see some problems with a partner of some sort. It could be a a romantic partner, it could be a friend, a business associate, uh, even another family member, someone that you have a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with in some way. Doesn't have to be intimate or anything, it can just be any sort of one-on-one -on -one interaction you have between you and someone else. It's not been good. The negotiations or whatever's going on has not worked out well. And there's been some disagreements and that might be what this is referring to, this bickering and squabbling. Nothing major, but uh, something along those lines. And I see news of a loss coming up. And I'm not sure what kind of loss. Um, I might know. I'll, I'll explain that coming up here. Um, now in the future, it looks like you're going to be setting pretty. The home, domestic life is going to be going well. Um, if this was a romantic partner, apparently that's been cleared up. Possibly a woman helped out in the situation. Um, and I see even more new good news coming for the home, for the family. Um, something along those lines, the house, the family, something associated with the home life. The world's not exactly at your feet. But things are unpredictable too. Who knows what can happen here? A lot can go on. And finally, it looks like monetarily, maybe this is reflected in it too. Um, it looks like cash-wise, you're going to be uh, better off. You're going to be going better off cash-wise, money-wise. And you'll have it to even spare a little bit, possibly. Um, 
I, I see this this bit of generosity coming up here for you in the future. You're gonna be generous with, and it doesn't have to be with money. It could be your time, you know, your your things of value. Anything of value, and your time is valuable. So uh, anything of value, you're gonna be giving it away in the near future for some reason. But it looks like you're pretty happy overall. Aside from this bickering and going on right now with somebody, you know, it looks like it's gonna straighten out here in the future. And it looks pretty rosy. For a, a, a future reading, that's, that's not too bad. All right, Sherry. So there you go. Now I hope the camera doesn't cut off before, because it tends to stop on me after a little while. It only stays on for so long. But before I can get uh, um, Kim Fitzgerald's reading in. Kim Fitzgerald. Okay, Kim. Oh, I almost forgot to cut him. And I'll take this one. Okay, Kim. Good news or bad news? <laughs> I'll start with the good news. Okay, it looks like you've been patient about something. Uh, you know, not, uh, not stressing out about it. You're very patient. And it looks like uh, money's come your way or will soon be coming your way. Here's another message about it you, you had in the past. You've got news in the past about money, a financial issue, or could be like an expensive gift or item or something, you know, will be coming your way. Something of value. You've gotten news of it before, and I don't know if you got anything then or not, but, uh, here you were celebrating for some reason, something you were really happy with in the past. Possibly receiving this money or this gift or something. Then something changed. There is a change of sorts coming on. It looks like in the future, okay, Someone's going to betray you, but not majorly. They'll stab you in the back, but it won't be that big a deal to you. They'll betray you, and it might be somebody you've expected to do it all along, and so it won't surprise you. But someone's going to let you down, and like I said, it won't be a big thing, but, you know. It's, it's going to happen. Maybe this person will take money from you or something. Possibly. Because this next card shows you needing to be uh, really uh, hoarding your money instead of being free with it. 
you're saving it up for something or you ha feel like you have to hold on to it because it's in, you know, short demand and you can't afford to really give out anything. And there's going to be a situation, uh, something unusual is going to happen. And it looks like you'll be in complete control over that. You know, you'll, you'll be right in your element when it comes to uh, dealing with that unusual situation. Now here comes some regret of some sort. And I don't know if it stems back to this person's actions or what, but there's going to be some regret. Um, like in this guy, he's, he's spilt his wine or whatever is in his glasses, water, wine. He spilled it and he's regretting it. He's sad. He couldn't take it with him. He couldn't keep it. Okay, and the last one here is, okay, someone's going to be giving you news or advice, I should say, not news, advice on monetary issues or something expensive, something along those lines. They're going to be giving you advice. I would not take it. You know, they seem to be well intended, but they don't know what they're talking about. Okay, so watch out for that. And, you know, try to ignore that information, that suggestion that they make, if at all possible. So, all right, Kim, I hope that made sense for you. And I hope yours made sense too, Sherry. And that is all. Well, I hope you all have a blessed day. Peace. And remember, believe. Because the spirits are out there. Bye-bye.